This show is brought to you in part by Bogart Extractors, an industry leader revolutionizing hydrocarbon extraction. Licensed facilities can rest assured that Bogart's certified systems meet all industry standards. They are peer-reviewed by a third-party engineer to ensure your facility and its employees can operate safely. And each stainless steel unit is built and tested right here in the USA. Bogart's functional extractors boast a faster and more cost-effective process with features like hydrocarbon falling films to supercharge evaporation rates, heavy-duty explosion-proof pumps for flammable liquid or vapor, industrial chillers capable of maintaining large tanks of solvent at temperatures well below negative 60 degrees Celsius, and Bogart offers extensive tech support and consultation services. So whether you need to set up an extraction lab from scratch or simply need some replacement gaskets, Bogart is a phone call away at 855-553-3887 or visit bogart.com. That's B-H-O-G-A-R-T dot com. Welcome. You're listening to Casually Baked, the podcast, home base for the can of curious. Thanks for tuning in. It's Time. We had a hard time together, together. Yes, it's a hard time. We had a hard time together. Hi, y'all. I'm Joe, your host and cannabis lifestyle guide. And this podcast is dedicated to our favorite four legged companions. We're exploring the relationship between vets, pets, and cannabinoid products with Dr. Terry Fossum, a world-renowned board-certified veterinary surgeon, author of the best-selling textbook, Small Animal Surgery, and a serial entrepreneur. Her textbook is in its fifth edition and has been translated into over a dozen languages. Dr. Fossum's background includes over 30 years of educating veterinarians and pet owners regarding diseases of companion animals. She has given over 1,000 invited lectures and keynotes to veterinarians throughout the world. Dr. Fossum has also been honored with numerous awards, including Distinguished Alumni and Continuing Educator of the Year. Among the many other hats she wears, Dr. Fossum is the CEO and co-founder of Dr. Fossum's Pet Care, which is developing safe, efficacious, and reliable wellness products for companion animals. In our discussion, she shares insights as not only a vet and educator, but also as a pet owner and a business owner experiencing the challenges of CBD regulations and compliance. But first, a word from our sponsor, MJ Relief. The Muscle Rub, Ph.D. formulated for what aches and pains you. And this week, we'll hear Linda's story of relief. Hello, I'm Linda from Texas, and I've been using MJ Muscle and Joint Relief for a couple of years now. I have lower back degenerative disease and arthritis. I also suffer from shoulder and arm pain. I apply the rub first thing of the morning and the last thing before I go to bed at night. And I honestly don't know what I'd do without it. If you're feeling Linda's arthritis pain and want some muscle and joint relief of your own, head over to mjskinrelief.com. And you know, it is about that time. So if you're thinking about holiday giving, the MJ Minis are stocking-sized gifts of relief that keep on giving. Stock up at MJSkinRelief.com. The Sustainability Roll-Up is presented by OCB Rolling Papers. In perfect harmony with natural sustainable practices, it's always been the OCB signature to provide the highest quality, responsibly sourced, and sustainably crafted rolling papers. And this week, I'm ringing the bell of diversity. It doesn't matter if we're talking about our diets, our gut, our friends, or our farms, and the communities that we live in. Variety is where it's at, people. We talk about the entourage effect in cannabis, but the more I learn, 
The entourage effect exists everywhere. Differences provide the layers and nuance that create a strong and healthy bond. Outside of synchronized diving or swimming, when is it ever better to always have everything the same? I'm sure there are others, but the majority of the time, that's really just not the case. Think about it. In our cannabis diet, THC is good. But THC, CBD, and CBG together, they're more effective for wellness effects. In our cannabis industry, do you think it's better to have a few big multi-state or multinational money brands versus a lot of smaller regional brands started by local business owners, many of whom were criminalized by the war on drugs? Now, when it comes to snacking, sure, protein is good. But a protein plus carb plus fat combo, that's optimum. As for friends, if you mostly hang out with your same high school crew 30 years later, <laughs> I think you're leaving some growth opportunities on the table. As for a wellness lifestyle, you can't just move your body or only engage in meditation and mindfulness. You got to pair those puppies together for best results. In America's farmland, if you're paying any attention, then you know that thousands of monocropped acres of soy or corn versus a 50-acre polyculture regenerative family farm, they can't even be compared. That monocropped farm creates more problems than solutions, while the diversity of that small farm creates the ultimate entourage effect between soil, bacteria, nature, animals, and humans. Now let's take a look at our community. Do you even know who serves on your city council? Is it an all-white city council or one that reflects the diverse voices of the population? When I reflect on the diversity in all areas of my life and where it's lacking, I also draw the same conclusion. The more diversity, the happier and healthier I am physically, mentally, and socially. And when it comes to cannabis flower, man, <laughs> I love keeping a diverse stash on hand to suit any possible mood or occasion. And thanks to OCB, I also maintain a diverse lineup of rolling papers to pair with that experience. From flax, wood, organic hemp to bamboo, OCB goes all in on the paper making process to deliver sustainable textile papers. No matter which OCB paper suits your rolling experience, you can be assured OCB only uses natural acacia gum for an always sticks experience. And all OCB rolling papers are vegan, GMO free, chlorine free, and dye free. Of course, you must be 21 and older to buy OCB rolling papers and to follow the natural wonders of OCB on social at OCB underscore USA. And for you grown-up joint rolling novices, I invite you to learn the craft alongside me. Catch the Roll With Me video series live streaming on the Casually Baked YouTube channel and the Highly Responsible Canna Consumers Facebook group. You'll find the replays on the WeedTube and Instagram. Get your Roll With Me starter kit at ocbusa.com backslash bait. You'll get four booklets of OCB and a rolling tray for only $4.99. This bundle is worth $20 and is around for a limited time and would make an excellent stocking stuffer. And because variety is the spice of life, I encourage you to sample the entire line of OCB products and let me know your favorite. Ask for OCB wherever you buy your papers. You'll find links to the OCB special offer and roll with me in the podcast 210 show notes at casuallybaked.com. If your pet is itchy, anxious, and struggling with sleep or mobility issues, this podcast is for you. It's also for anyone curious about using CBD and other cannabinoids for those issues. Maybe you're nervous about choosing the right product for your pet, or you don't understand dosing, or you lack the language to speak about it with your veterinarian. Well, I'm telling you, this podcast has you covered. So smoke them if you got them, 
and head to the dog park. It's time to get casually baked. I got the bottle of wine, the high dollar kind. I got the West Coast smoke, but I better just take one. Toast. Thank you so much, Dr. Terry Fossum, for joining us today to talk about vets, pets, and cannabinoids. Uh, thank you, Joe. It's a pleasure to be here. I was so impressed when um, I learned about your business, businesses, and who you are and what you're doing for all of our furry four-legged friends. You know, with all the wildfires, actually how I learned about you was um, through an article that I read published in Chico um, in Northern California where all the wildfires were happening. And so let's just dive in there since I am in Northern California and that was how I, I learned about you. Tell me about the product that y'all had created and how y'all were treating pets um, from these severe burns. Yeah, so um, say I have a company called Dr. Fossum's Pet Care and our mission is to find new natural wellness products to help pets. And I have a friend that actually works in Chico as a veterinarian and he was telling me how disheartening it was to get all these burned animals in, many of them without owners even. So I mean, they were caring for all kinds of livestock and companion animals. And um, burns are, you know, incredibly painful on animals as well as people. And so we were looking for something that would make these animals more comfortable, but would also speed up the healing. And so what we did is we took our cannabinoid base um, and added it to Manuka honey. So our product has CBD and CBG in it. And the nice thing about that combination is that CBG in particular is found to be antibacterial against some really nasty bugs that are resistant to most antibiotics. So for example, you know, most people have heard of MRSA or methicillin resistant staph. Um, CBG appears in most cases to be able to kill staph aureus. So That's we had very this impressive. natural, yeah, natural topical agent that, you know, made these animals feel more comfortable and um, sped up healing and they, they granulated and they weren't as painful as long and they healed faster. And so we were very excited to be able to put that product out there and we donated a bunch when we were researching it to uh, the veterinarians in that area. I love that. When I was traveling more around the holidays and I was having to wear a mask a lot and I'd forgotten mine and had to wear a surgical mask and I got the terrible mask knee breakout where my whole face was just sores and itchy oh. and disgusting. And that's oh. what I used the Manuka honey um, oh, really? Yes. I slathered it all over my face. And it was hilarious because I'd wake up in the morning with sideburns. <laughs> it's sticky. Yeah. It's so sticky, but it was the only thing that could yeah. keep it from itching. And of course, you know, you don't want to put your hands on your face and then everything's sticky. So anyway, I, it was working for me. So when I saw that article, I'm like, this is brilliant. And so then I kind of went down the Dr. Terry Fossum wormhole and, you know, you are a huge influence in the veterinarian community. And, you know, vets are really on the fence about talking about cannabinoids or prescribing cannabinoids. And so I loved that you were just diving in. Um, so can we talk a little bit about that? You know, the big pharma conspiracy, the why vets aren't getting involved and jumping on board with this? Yeah, you are 100% right in that most veterinarians are afraid to even talk about CBD. And the reason is, is that the state board guidance, um, most states have not given any guidance. And so veterinarians, because it's not an FDA approved product, you know, there's been talk from some of the regulatory agencies that veterinarians, you know, should not be using or recommending CBD. We couldn't prescribe it because it's not a, an FDA approved product, but they can't even, you know, most veterinarians are afraid to even recommend it. Now, some of that goes because of this lack of state guidance and that's starting to change. Nevada just changed. Now veterinarians can sell it, talk about it, 
do whatever. Michigan is that way as well. Other states will be coming on board. But right now we're in this period of time where veterinarians are afraid that they could potentially lose their license if they talk about it. And, you know, we all know CBD is safe. I'm not sure you can even overdose it, no matter how much you gave. But the concern of veterinarians is what if they have a dog on something else, which is potentially harmful, and then something goes wrong, if they get turned in to their state licensing board and CBD is one of the products that the animal was given, you know, they could get in trouble. So they're, most of them are hesitant. And I really do think, and I am not a conspiracy theory person in any way, but I think that there's, you know, a, it's, it's probably realistic that big pharma is involved with trying to keep cannabinoid products off the market or make it harder for us to sell because it will cut into their revenue. There's no doubt it's, it's an inexpensive product compared to most of the products that have gone through the FDA approval process, you know, costs. Are you ready to make bad days a thing of the past? I invite you to explore the why behind the things you do every day that make you feel awesome. In his new book, Make It a Great Day, author Jarrett Robertson shares small ideas you can use to feel your best. So the next time you're looking for ways to improve your day or mood, you're empowered to do just that. Your day can't control you when you follow this roadmap to thrive. Purchase Make It a Great Day on Audible or online at makeitagreatday.ca. Millions. Um, some people say uh, for a human drug, it's over a billion dollars to get a drug approved these days in 10 to 12 years. They don't want a product out there that may help and hasn't gone through that process, but is, is you know natural and less expensive and will benefit these animals. So I do think we are fighting an uphill battle yeah. with big pharma. You know, and when you think about something where there might be a drug-drug interaction, so then you're like, oh, do I take this CBD, this natural plant medicine, or do we stay on this pharmaceutical drug? And you're having this, you know, natural conversation with your vet or, you know, as a human, your doctor. And it very well could be that you could get weaned off of this drug and lean on natural medicines, which, you know, doesn't make big pharma happy either. Well, to be honest, we see that happening a lot in the cases and the dogs that are on our product. We get notes from people all the time saying that they were on some other medication and they have been able to either go off that or significantly reduce the dose and have the same lack of discomfort in their pets as um, when they were on the pharmaceutical product. So it, it absolutely is happening. You know, and let's talk about that because I... I'm no longer a pet owner. I had two pugs who had my whole heart and I had two terrible deaths with both of them. And, and I just haven't had the heart to have more pets. I but, love pugs. Oh my God, they're so cute. But <laughs> the thing that I notice now is that it seems like every person that I know who owns a dog, they're itchy, they bite their paws, they like give themselves hot spots. And I never used to notice that before. It seems like every pet in the world has allergies right now, and nobody knows how to soothe their dogs with this. Uh, it's very true. I mean, some some of those itching and hot spots are probably caused by fleas, and sometimes the owners don't even know that their dogs have them. They don't have a big load, but they have enough to make them itchy. But I think you're right. A lot of it is allergies. Sometimes it's to food. Sometimes it's to the environment, carpet, things like that, products that we use in our household. I think, uh, honestly, it's probably because there are so many more non-natural products that these pets are coming you know, in contact with. It is causing them to have allergies and causing them to be itchy. What are the things that maybe CBD and CBG, are there things that you're prescribing or ways that you're directing people to use the cannabinoids for things like that? You know, there have been no studies, to my knowledge, looking at dogs or, or cats, for that matter, any companion animal 
and looking at skin disease or itching. And you, you probably, this is one of the issues as a company we have. So there on the human side, there is one product that is FDA approved that is a CBD isolate and that's Epidiolex. On the veterinary side, there are no products that are FDA approved. Because they're not FDA approved, they're not drugs. They're not considered drugs, which means that we cannot make a therapeutic claim. And there are lots of words that we cannot use. For example, we can't say our product is, or CBD is anti-inflammatory. We can't say that it can reduce pain. Those are words that are only for drugs. So we can only say things like it may calm your pet. Um, it may uh, relieve uh, some discomfort. Things of that nature is what we have to play around with right now in this world, even though quite honestly, we all know that there are strong, um, and see, I'm hesitant to even well, say Well, and so. yes, and there are I- strong anti-inflammatory properties. Right. We all know that, but we can't say it. Yeah. It's so and, silly that you have to play this game. It is a federal legislative game and all of these industries, they're pawns on a chessboard and it's just big money shoving them around. And, you know, we just have to sit there and be like, oh, well, today we can't say this or, you know, like I have OCB as one of my sponsors and I can't use the words weed or cannabis or whatever. You have to dance around the words that you can say along with the name of the company. And it's, it's bonkers. You absolutely do. And then think about, you know, we try to advertise on Facebook and other places and uh, Amazon. We can't sell on Amazon because they won't do CBD. And even though it's federally legal. Yeah, we, our product doesn't have any I thought THC. Amazon had no scruples and would sell anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, apparently their scruples are around CBD. So now there are people selling, but what they do is they call it hemp extract and they t just take off all the words, you know, CBD, now anything to do with cannabinoids, they take off and then they call it broad spectrum or full spectrum hemp extract. And that's how they sell it. Mm -hmm. But to me, that's doing a disservice to the public. Because yeah. you're, it's, it's the same product. It's just wordsmithing. So that I find that rather upsetting. I mean, we personally, you know, we've lost, you know, a busy selling season. We'll have we'll get dropped from the credit card processors. Our bank, you know, not doing anything wrong, but the, our bank said they weren't going to do CBD anymore. We had to quickly find a new bank. I mean, those oh, are yeah. the types of things that. Even companies just dealing with CBD deal with it is this hard, way harder than I expected when I got into this business. And 100%. I got into it though because I wanted to put my own pet on it. I have an 11 year old lab who's elbow condition and elbow dysplasia, and he's lame in the summers when he swims. I didn't want to put him on non steroidals. I, you know, I, I see a lot of dogs that have issues with those. And so I wanted to try CBD, but I didn't like what I saw out on the marketplace. So that's why I started my own company. But honestly, if I had known how hard it would be, I might not have done that. I might've gone with other natural pet wellness products, like our you know, we have one for cognitive dysfunction that doesn't have any CBD in it. That's yeah. just so much easier. But I have to say, I've got a side MJ Skin LLC, and me and my best friend, we have formulating skincare products for people with sensitive skin like me. And yeah, I told her just yesterday, if I would have known what this was going to yeah. be like, I would have just said, let's just keep making this for you and I. I don't, yeah. it, because it's so disheartening how you get treated as a business or what. Shit, the most recent thing I've seen was a federally licensed cannabis research organization got dropped by Bank of America. And I'm glad that they're making a big deal out of it. They got a two weeks notice and it was like no exceptions. Mm -hmm. It's just a letter in the mail. Your account, start moving your money or whatever. Your account will be closed in like 14 That's or 21 days. That is exactly what happened to us. Yeah. Exactly. what We just got a letter saying we're not going to we're, we're not going to deal with CBD companies anymore. So find a new bank. Yeah. Uh, which isn't easy to do, mind you, as no. you know. I mean, it's you, we had searched a lot of banks. You can find one that would deal with CBD and 
Oh, yeah. Um, but we were lucky enough. We, yeah. we found enough I courted we banks for down. nine months. It was pretty ridiculous. But back to the pets that soothe us. Um, yeah. So some of the reasons that someone, you know, might come in thinking, hey, I, I need to put my dog on meds, you know, whether, whether it's an aging dog, an anxious dog, and they come in, they want to make a case for cannabinoids. Like, let's help them do that. Instead of putting them on pharmaceutical drugs, what all things could these cannabinoid rich medications or treats or whatever do for dogs or cats or horses or whatever? Yeah. And, you know, interesting, you you just mentioned treats. Um, So we can't actually even call, you know, a a so we have to say it's a chew. It can't be a treat. And the reason for that is that a treat is considered food and hemp has not been approved as a food ad- additive in the U.S. So although you will see companies talking about treats with CBD in it, they are doing so illegally. So that's why you see everybody talking about chews, just, just FYI. Okay, got so it. the most common indication that we see by far is for mobility issues in dogs and you know, it's, it's interesting because we, we have a, a subscriber program and we always call when somebody stops prescribing, we always call, you know, find out, you know, why they did so. And if there's an issue that we can address and by far and away, the most common reason that people stop using CBD in their dogs is that they die because they are older pets to begin with. So, but we hear great stories. I had one the other day, I was talking to a, a lady who's got a, a dog that had bilateral cruciate ligament surgery and couldn't, the dog really wasn't mobile after the surgeries and her husband wanted to put the dog to sleep and she decided to try CBD and the dog is going on hikes now. Oh, nice. um, you know, and he's an older dog, you know, he's probably going to live another year or so, but you know, a good quality year. Oh, I'd, worth I'd give much. anything for another year with my pups. Exactly. Yeah. You mentioned anxiety. That's another big one. You know, fireworks, you know, thunderstorms, anything that can make a dog anxious. Or honestly, the biggest thing we're seeing right now is people going back to work and dogs that have for the past year or year and a half had their owners at home are now, I, I have one of those dogs actually, I have a one-year-old lab as well. And he has really serious separation anxiety, hates it when he's left alone. And so it does seem that we can remove a lot of that anxiety or dogs, you know, some of these older dogs that pace at night. I was talking to a guy just yesterday that said that this old dog would pace at night, vocalize at night, was keeping him up. And he started him on CBD and now the dog sleeps through the night. So he gets to sleep through the night. And so yeah. sometimes we're, we're helping the people as much as we're helping the dogs. But that's a pretty yes. common scenario as well. When you were talking about the separation anxiety, I had a flash of my little pug, Leo. And he was a puppy and I'd go to work. I would go and get in my truck and I could just hear him howling. And he would be looking at me through the blinds, just oh, like yeah. crying. And yeah. so I had to go and get him a kennel. And of course, I got like the large lab size kennel. So he kind of had a little apartment, but it was like it made him feel better. I'd go, go get in your kennel and I'd go in and I'd shut the door and he would be better than if I just left him to roam in the house alone. But yeah, yeah. the anxiety is oh, real. It is real. And, and a lot of dogs actually do feel better in a confined space that they're comfortable with. So it's smart to, to put them in a crate. So what about human CBD products with pets? So, you know, a lot of people, they take their CBD on their own and they're like, oh, well, you know, maybe. What do you think about that? And um, is there any difference, you know, between like the CBD products that you're creating for pets versus just a regular CBD for humans? So there is absolutely no difference between our product and what is, you know, marketed for humans, made exactly the same way, same standards, GMP quality, absolutely no difference. The problem comes is when you start looking at most of these human companies that have spun out a pet product, 
what they've really done is they have just slapped a pet label on their human product. And the issue that comes around to me, how do you correctly dose that? And I, I mean, I've looked up a bunch of the big names and I, I won't name them on your show, but I've looked at their products and I can't always even figure out how much I should be giving because they don't give adequate instructions. So I know how to dose it, but if I can't figure out how many milligrams they have per ml, it becomes hard. And that's the biggest problem we see with people that come into the clinics. They'll come in, they'll have their, you know, their CBD tincture and they'll go, so I was told to give, you know, 0.2 mls of this. And then we'll start, you know, going backwards and trying, they're, they're not even given enough. You know, it's a ridiculously small dose. So that's, that's my issue is when people take medications, if you look at antibiotics, a lot of it's just dosed on, you know, give this amount, get, they get 200 milligrams, whatever. Well, with dogs, because they can go from a one pound, you know, chihuahua to a 180 pound Newfoundland, we can't dose like that. We dose everything on a milligram per kilogram basis. And so that's how we dose our product. We made sure that we had, you know, small, medium, and large, and that we can make sure that we give them an exact dose. And if they don't have enough variation in their products, and the human products typically, they're labeled for pets, typically don't, you're going to have just a really hard time. And yeah, is yeah. there kind of a standard, what's that milligrams per kilogram starting point? So the, the studies that are out there in dogs have shown that two milligrams per kilogram um, seems to help dogs that have mobility issues. So two milligrams per kilogram twice a day, morning and night. I have some people that actually take that daily dose and give it three times a day. The half-life of CBD is probably around four and a half hours in dogs. It, it varies. Every dog absorbs it differently. But so two, three times a day, you know, you can vary that dose. I usually tell people if they're treating anxiety, they can probably start with a lower dose. But the fact of the matter is you have to play with the dose mm -hmm. until you get what's right, because it is going to depend on just how well your dog absorbs it. And some of that's, you know, they, they do absorb uh, hemp better when they have a fatty meal on board. Okay. So that was my next question. Right. Is it with food or not with food? So definitely with so, food yeah. then. Yeah, again, we can't tell people give it with food or add it to food wow. because then it would be a food additive. So we dance around that all the time. But the fact of the matter is what we do tell people, it is absorbed better with fat. Man, and so, it's like you have to hold up little picture images like, I'm not saying yeah, this, yeah. just look at this I picture. I can't say this, but you, you yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's going to get better. So it's really going to get better. I have no doubt, you know, these ridiculous regulations and in many cases lack of regulations um are, are going to change but for the next few years it's it's, it's kind of tough what we've done is we've really said we want to market to veterinarians because we we really believe that the veterinarians know what these dogs are on what are their products they know their health issues they're the ones who should be recommending these products and so we have tried to educate veterinarians. Part of it is uh, honestly just a lack of education about CBD in general to veterinarians. So we did, we put a webinar on our website that's free and veterinarians actually can get a, a CE credit if they watch it and answer a couple easy questions at the end. Um, but that's just part of what we need to do is we just need, need to educate veterinarians and then hope that they will educate their clients. Right. And then, you know, proactive clients, it's you do your part to educate your veterinarian as well. So if you know that this is a good option, if, you know, the majority of cannabis consumers completely understand the benefits for pets. And so if you have a vet that doesn't understand, then you be the person that extends the white papers, the educational materials, you know, bring in what you've been giving your pet and tell them how it's working. I, I tell people to keep a dosage tracker for themselves. Keep one for your pets. Like my best friend, Dr. V, she 
adopted a dog who has spent like the first five or six years of its life in a kennel. And so this dog will spin in circles, all you know, and she has learned his circles, you know, whether or not it's I need to go outside or I'm anxious or we're in a new place. Like all the circles are different, but she will give him CBD and, you know, she'll be like, "Uh oh, I gave him a little too much CBD this time. So, you know, you notice the way they act. So being able to keep a journal of those things helps you be a more responsible pet parent, but then that gives you evidence to take into a vet's office. Yeah. And that's a great point. It's so important because the majority of your listeners are going to go into a veterinarian and ask about CBD and the veterinarian is either going to say, I can't talk to you about it, or they're going to say, I don't know anything about it. So they are going to be educating their veterinarian. And do you have resources on the Dr. Fossum's Pet Care website that people can review or download and share? So we have the webinar. Believe it or not, we cannot add even information about peer-reviewed publications to our website because that would make us, that's an implied claim. And we can't make therapeutic claims. Well, how about um, this? If there's any that you have that you can share with me for my own education, I have no problem sharing things with my tribe. So if you have some stuff that I could share, I bet that would be a good way around this. We have a list to maybe not every, but pretty much pretty much every article, peer reviewed publication that has been published involving pets and cannabinoids that we can send you. Awesome. And um, you are the person, the National Animal Supplement Council, um, their safety study, Dr. Fossum wrote it. So if she's sharing information with us, you can count that it's credible. Now tell me, is there anything that I didn't ask you that you think is important to share to round out the conversation? You know, it would be worth making sure that the listeners know that they do have to be careful with THC in dogs. Dogs are much more sensitive to THC and will show signs of toxicity if they you know, get into their human counterparts. Uh, weed, Stash. They, they can get into serious trouble. Yeah. So do be careful with that. Um, there are so you know, if it's hemp is less than 0.3% THC, and that's not going to get any animal into trouble. We chose to take all of it out of ours just because one of our products is a chew and they are pretty tasty. My dogs actually who, I mean, they're Labradors who are gluttonous to begin with, but um, they love them. And if they could get into the whole jar and eat them all at one time, they would do that. And so we just, I just didn't want to take the risk that, you know, that any of them would would have a toxicity. So we took it out. And that's not to say that I don't think there are indications for THC in dogs because I do. Mm-hmm. Um, I definitely do. I, I have friends who are oncologists that use it for, you know, different types of cancer, especially bone cancers, things like that, that are really painful. Mm-hmm. Um, it really helps, but, but our product doesn't. So just people should be aware that, you know, they can get into issues with toxicity with THC and to yes. keep an eye on that. And I have seen that happen to a dog before. So let's let's talk about that. So unfortunately, it's happened. Your dog has had way too much THC, and you know they they look drunk and they start kind of foaming mm-hmm. at the mouth or whatever. So if we're going to take our dog to the vet, this has happened. Is it helpful? Like just the way CBD is for humans, where CBD can counter the effects of THC with us. So. Before we go to the vet, would it be helpful to give our dog a couple of CBD chews or whatever? Uh, it certainly wouldn't hurt. I hadn't, you know, I hadn't only honestly thought about that. So one of the things we do see in dogs that's a little interesting when they have THC toxicity is they actually get urinary incontinence. One of the first things they'll start urinating inappropriately. Um, so that can be a tip off. Interestingly enough, when most people take their, and this is starting to change, but when they bring their pets in that do have THC toxicity, most people won't admit it or won't acknowledge it. Um, So it leaves the veterinarians playing a bit of a guessing game. 
Um, but yeah, I think, yeah, you're absolutely right. So if you give CBD, um, you know, it binds uh, not in the receptor site for THC, but it binds such that it changes the receptor site so that THC doesn't bind as well. So it can, it can counteract the effect. So I haven't tried that, Joe, but I think that's a, that's a good idea to think about putting a little CBD on board as long as it doesn't have more THC in it. Yes. All right. Yeah, because it's like, you know, if that's happened to you in the moment, you know, I have this thing I call taking care of future Joe. So I'm like, okay, if something bad happens down the road, like how would I handle this particular situation? That way, if I'm ever in it, future Joe has been prepared. So. <laughs> That's a great idea. Future Joe is going to be very smart. So if people want to learn more from you, they want to check out the various pet products that you have on the market. How do people find Dr. Fossums? drfossums.com. They can um, purchase off the website. They can subscribe and get discounts. Um, we do, if they, they go into their veterinarians and their veterinarians don't sell the product, which is going to be the case with most of them, the veterinarians that sign up with us can be an affiliate. And then they actually get a commission when they somebody comes in and puts their name in as a referring veterinarian or uses a code that we supply to the veterinarian. So that they can get a discount, their veterinarians get a commission. All right. Um, nice little side hustle. I have a couple of affiliates that I work with. You know, if it's a product that I take and people are asking me for advice on something, people are like, well, have you tried this CBD product? I'm like, there are thousands of CBD products out there. <laughs> Likely I have not tried it, but I have tried these. So I appreciate that. Don't y'all add other things in though in your products, like kind of creating that entourage effect with other um, herbs and things? Yeah, absolutely. So our, um, our current tincture has CBD and CBG and terpenes. And we're actually coming out with a new tincture that's also going to have CBN in it. Um, so we're very much a believer in a broad spectrum product. Um, and, you know, the other thing we didn't talk about, Joe, that we probably should just quickly is that people need to know that they they should learn how to read and they should look at a certificate of analysis on these products that they're purchasing. Because, you know, the hemp plant is a soil remediator or pull anything out of the soil where it's planted. So if, let's say, tobacco was planted there previously and had lots of pesticides and herbicides, you're going to get that in the flower and it's going to get concentrated. And that's what you're going to be eating or giving to your pet. So you really want to make sure that all the heavy metals, herbicides, pesticides, et cetera, have been removed from your product. And any reputable company will have a COA available. And I will layer on top of that too. A COA can be as basic as just showing you the cannabinoid ratios and perhaps terpenes. But a full panel will show you the pesticides, herbicides, and heavy metals. And a panel like that is about $700. And a lot of small companies, they can't afford that. So they just do the other panel to show, hey, I have a COA, but it's not really showing you all of the details. So being able to understand what you should be seeing on a certificate of analysis um, is important because then when you, you know, dive into it and you start seeing all the charts and stuff, you know what to look for. And if you're not seeing those things, I would send an email and ask about it, ask to see the full panel, ask to see proof that it's clean. And if you don't have that kind of time, just find a more reputable company to buy with. That you can just trust. And, you know, keep in mind that one, there are a lot of fake COAs out there these days. And a lot of products don't have the amount of cannabinoids that they say. There are some that actually, when you they get tested, they don't have any cannabinoids. So, make well, sure but you check that's not way. necessarily the all the truth, though. I have had multiple COAs done where one will say non detect, like we didn't see any CBD, and then the next one will say there's 87 milligrams of CBD in it. So, a lot wow. of times it comes down to. What are the types of oils being used? Was it heated at the right rate? Because, you know, we had one situation where 
olive oil was eating the CBD and like co- totally encasing it. And so it was hiding it from the test. So you might be using clean CBD, but if you don't have a formulator that knows all the nuances, it can give you poor readings. So, you know, it's a lot more complicated than just somebody might be a bad player. They could be totally doing this for all the right reasons, but not have the knowledge to be doing it um, the right way. Right. Absolutely. And the other thing I would say is you, if you can make sure that there's third party testing of the product, you don't want just to see the COA from the company itself. Yeah. A thousand percent. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for hanging out. I'm looking over here in the comments. Let's see. I bought a German Shepherd puppy a year ago. She was 12 weeks old the first day I brought her home. She ate a roach from the backyard. I didn't know it, but the vet did. I did deny any cannabis. Needless to say, I always discard my roaches appropriately now. (laughs) Yeah. Good job. Well, and I had a friend, we were on a hike and her dog would, you know, run off trail. And after getting home from a hike one day, her dog started acting like this. And she was like, oh my gosh, did my dog get in my stash? But it was edible or something thrown off the trail. Like, you know, somebody eating something being like, oh, this isn't good, tossing it. And her dog got a hold of it. So, you know, just random things happen. Pet owners, we're not perfect, but, um, but you know, just be honest. And that's the fastest way to get your pet better. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well said. All right. Well, thank you so much for hanging out. Thank you for having me. It's really been a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you for all the work that you do. I will include your impressive bio and links to the books that you've written in the show notes at casuallybake.com. Thanks, Dr. Fossum. Thank you. If you appreciated Dr. Fossum's insight and want to try out her line of pet care products, she's extending a 20% discount to you as a podcast listener. The promo code is casuallybaked20. If you're out and about, don't worry about writing it down. You'll find links to both the special offer and pet and cannabinoid research that we talked about in the podcast 210 show notes at casuallybaked.com backslash blog. And if you're ready to experience the roots of cannabis culture, consider a casually baked day trip or retreat in the beautiful wine and weed country of Northern California. As your host and cannabis lifestyle guide, I've cultivated a one-of-a-kind farm stay experience and exclusive Emerald Triangle access. Enjoy the casually baked lifestyle and the magic of sun-grown cannabis farms and vineyards. If you're into wine, weed, weather, wellness, or all of the above, get ready to have a high time customized just for you. Learn more and get pricing at casuallybaked.com backslash travel. That's casuallybaked.com backslash travel. I am delighted to be on this journey with you, and I want to help build your can of confidence in ways that are meaningful for you. So don't be shy. Send me an email. Ask your can of curious questions through the website at casuallybaked.com. You can also DM me on social. I'm at Casually Baked on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and the Weed Tube. And if you're picking up what I'm putting down, please become a podcast patron for $5 per month at patreon.com backslash casually baked. It takes a village to continue inviting smart and open dialogue about true wellness and plant medicine. So thank you for doing your part to puff puff pass it on. Casually Baked the Podcast was created, recorded, and produced by yours truly. Editing and sound design are in the capable hands of Arnav Gupta. The podcast theme music is by my highly talented friend, Seth Walker. If you aren't familiar with Seth's music, you can find High Time on his album, Gotta Get Back, wherever you're buying your music these days. I know he didn't create High Time for me, but it sure as shit sounds like he did, right? I hope you'll tune in next time. Thanks for hanging out.